Hello, how is everyone doing today? How exciting. We are on episode, oh my God, on episode 14. And um, we are just so excited to be here with you guys. And um, everybody's joining now, which is amazing. Okay. How's everyone doing today? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I'm excited about this topic today. So I am all by myself. So you guys have to do me a favor and you guys have to comment. You guys got to comment. If you have any questions on what I'm talking about, I want you guys to definitely be um, on point with everything that's going on. Let me fix my view here. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I want to make sure that everybody understands what I'm talking about today. So we have been going through an amazing episode, a four-week series of generational curses, breaking through generational curses. All right, I see everybody joining here, which is amazing. Hi, Christine. I see everybody joining. God bless everyone that's coming in today. I'm so excited. I'm so excited today. I think you are going to learn a lot. I encourage you to grab a pen and paper and or if it's your device, make sure it's not the device that you're watching me in uh, and just start writing some things that I have. So for some people, they kind of requested some people in my life and some people DM me. And they were talking about how awesome the uh, series, the four-week series of Breaking Through Generational Curses was. And I was like, okay, thank you so much. I mean, God had put that in my heart because it's something that I've actually gone through. And I put it together and my sister helped me. And it was just so amazing of everything that, that we did and everything we spoke about. But one of the things that we did not speak about last week, okay, one of the things that we did not speak about last week uh, in detail was the internal mastering your internal dialogue, which was what you do to really curse yourself. The things that you do, the things that you share to yourself in your mind, certain things like that, that are really uh, uh, so important because how many of you guys know how many of you guys know that um, <clears throat> the person you listen to the most is yourself, right? Raise your hand if you know that, all right? You talk to yourself all the time. Uh, people don't really teach this in school. They don't teach this in college. The importance of really understanding uh, what you talk to yourself about and how you uh, really just master what you think about. So one of the things that I learned and one of the things I learned really just understanding and being psychological about who I was and understanding people and reading um, self-improvement books, some of those things were uh, to talk about, basically think about what you're thinking about is the big thing. Think about what you're thinking about. And that was huge because I was never taught that. I was never taught, think about what you think about. And I, I was kind of like rampaging. You wake up in the morning. What am I going to wear? You know, it, you guys all know that that's what we do all day. Whether they want to share with you what they're thinking about, people are thinking. They're thinking about simple things like what should I wear or getting to work or doing a cup, uh, you know, doing whatever they have to do during the day, the day. But understand that you need to realize that you really need to capture your thoughts. And we're going to talk about what the Bible talks about in 2 Corinthians about capturing your thoughts and putting them in obedience to God and understanding that, yes, you know, part of the generational curses that, that we instill, some of them we instill in ourselves. Okay, so today, 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 we are going to learn how to not be victims. All right, it's time to stop being vic a victim. It's time to stop saying, you know, to start saying, hey, 
um, you know, I, I went, I'm going through this because my mother did this. I'm going through this because my father did this to me or my great grandmother, or, you know, that's what a generational curse is. Something that goes down from generations. And we were talking about in the last four episodes that you can look at them in, in my YouTube account. Um, in Genari Arsecado, they're all there. You can go back and listen to them. But we were talking about how you could break those generational curses. One of the toughest ones, in my opinion, in my opinion, is what you tell yourself. Because nobody knows. Nobody's in your mind. Nobody knows what you're talking about. Nobody knows what you're thinking about. Nobody knows what's in between these two ears, right? They, they only talk about, they only hear what you say. They only hear, they only see what you do, but they never know what you are thinking about. Now, I, I, this is funny. Give a thumbs up or, or if you understand what I'm saying. Have you ever asked somebody, hey, you look like you're in a deep thought. What are you thinking about? And they say, nothing. And you're like, really? Nothing? You know, I used to ask my husband that all the time. You know, I used to ask him that all the time. Hey, babe, what are you thinking about? Nothing. And either he didn't want to tell me or maybe he just didn't know. Or maybe he was just focused on whatever. You know, men are usually thinking about how am I going to provide to my family? What do I have to do tomorrow? You know, they're thinking about work, providing. They're thinking about, you know, um, taking care of their family. Hopefully, hopefully that's what they're thinking about. Okay. But that is one of the things that I started mastering and I started saying, well, you know, if the Bible talks about capturing your thoughts, if the Bible talks about capturing, um, you know, take every thought captive, then that means that every thought that comes to your mind might not be of God. Have you ever thought of that? Have you ever thought that maybe some of the thoughts that are going through in your mind are being put there by someone else? Maybe by the enemy? Maybe by the things that have been told to you when you were growing up? Okay, maybe by you're listening to your mother when you were four years old and your mother used to say, oh, you, you know, you're no good for anything. And maybe your mother used to say things like, or your dad used to say, you're never going to account for anything. You're never going to win or whatever it was that they told you that stayed embedded in your mind that now you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s moving forward and you're still thinking about those thoughts that they told you and they stop you from becoming a better you. So today what we're going to talk about is mastering your internal dialogue so that, so that you can reach your destiny. How important is that? I know that God has created us to be great. God has created us with uniqueness, with power, where we are powerful. We are so different from animals. What sets us apart is that we could think. What sets us apart is that God gave us the ability to make choices. What sets us apart is that we can sit down and say, hey, I don't want to do that. Or, hey, I want to do that. That's what sets us apart from everything else, from all the animals in the animal kingdom. Okay? God took his time to create us from the dust of the ground so that we can have the ability to make choices in our life. Okay? I see everybody here joining. Sarah, how you doing, my love? Tiffany, um, truth-telling tools. Hi, sweetheart, how are you? I need to know your name. You got to write your name on there. Um, eh, so many other people. Strong, Estrella. Um, wow. Sometimes I forget people's names. <laughs> Gino. God bless you guys all for joining. That's on Instagram. And then I have a whole bunch here on Facebook. Um, God bless you all for joining. But I want you to be interactive with me today because obviously I'm here by myself. Um, and I, I love it. Sometimes I have guests, sometimes I don't. But the point is going to get across. Have you ever been taught that you need to think about what you think about? That you need to master your internal dialogue? Because nobody can tell you, hey, you're thinking about this or you're thinking about that. Nobody can tell you that because nobody knows. Okay? So that's amazing. Have, I, I, I already spoke about. So the importance, why is it important to master your internal dialogue is the big thing. I wrote this down because I thought it was so important. I was listening to a book called Switch, um, Switch on the Brain. 
and by Karen Leaf. It's an amazing book. You should listen to it. She is a neurologist. She's a doctor uh, for many, many years. And she realized that every one of your thoughts creates um, different vibrations in your brain. Okay. And when they're negative and toxic, you can see it. When they're positive and, and want to take you somewhere else, you can see that too. And she said this, and I'm giving her all the credit, but it really lines up to everything that we are talking about here. Our thinking and choosing becomes the signal that activates, um, that activates or deactivates the generational issues in our life. I'm going to say that again. Okay. I'm going to say that again. Our thinking and choosing become the signal that activate or deactivate the generational issues in our lives. Amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So you have a choice whether or not you're going to fall into those generational curses or not. Because your thinking is either what is going to activate it or deactivate it. Are you understanding that? Your thinking is what's going to activate it or deactivate it. I, I, I was like, wow. So either the good, the bad, the ugly, okay, they all come down to the choices that you make because of the thoughts that you allow to, to, uh, 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 to dwell in your brain. Those thoughts are what's going to make you become who you are today. So if you're listening to me today and you look at your life, and you say, I don't want to be where I'm at. Or you say, maybe I want to make different decisions in my life. Maybe I'm tired of being ABC, whatever it is. I'm tired of being anxious, fearful, scared. I'm tired of all those things. I'm tired of feeling insecure. I'm tired of feeling, um, you know, doubtful or confused all the time. Or not knowing what I need to do in my life. If you are in, those, in that situation right now. This episode is for you because I promise you that God did not create you to be bitter, to be unforgiving, to be confused, to be in doubt. And I'm going to give you strategies in order for you to be able to come out of that today. So amazing. So amazing. Have you guys ever heard of the, uh, of the saying, right? It's actually a verse in the Bible, but as a man thinketh, so is he. I used to hear that. And when I was a lot younger, I never really knew that that was a verse in the Bible. It says it in Proverbs 23, 7. Okay, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So if you think something different in your heart, could you become something different in real life? Right? So your thoughts become real things. It's biblical. Your thoughts become real things. If you keep on saying, I want to die, guess what? You're inviting death into your life. If you keep on saying, I'm so scared. I don't know what's going to happen in 2020. I don't know what's going to happen in the elections. Oh my God, my life is over. Guess what? You're inviting death. You're inviting uh, a negativity into your life. And you're not allowing God to make you fruitful the way he wants you to be. Okay, now I welcome everybody that's here today. I want to give a, a little interlude because everybody's watching the debate. I get it. So if you're watching me today, I am so honored that you're taking out the time to watch me. Okay, whether it's now live or whether it's later on. But I want you to realize that what you tell yourself is one of the most important things that you can ever master to become the person God wants you to be. So what's the reason? What is the reason why you need to master your thoughts? I'm going to tell you why. Thank you for asking. I'm going to tell you why. The reason why you need to master your thoughts is for five different reasons. Number one, your thoughts, what do they become? Your thoughts become feelings. Okay? Your thoughts become feelings. Those feelings become action. Those actions become habits. Then they become your character. So it starts with a thought that makes you become who you are today. So understand that's why it is so important to master your thoughts. Because if you don't master your thoughts, you will never become who God originally created you to be. 
And it could be as simple as, hey, wanting to lose weight. Hey, wanting to get a better job. Maybe wanting to start a business. Maybe wanting to do something different in your life. Maybe you're tired of, of you know, of, of, of the routine in your life. Maybe you want your marriage to change. Maybe you want your parenting. Maybe you want to change in your schooling. Whatever it is you, you want, whatever it is you want to do, you got to change your thought first. So it starts with a thought that goes into a feeling, that goes into an action, then it goes into a, 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 a habit, then becomes your character. Think about people, okay, that, that, that maybe are murderers, or maybe steal, or maybe lie, or, or maybe their lifestyle is not the way they want it. It started with a thought. Think about people that cheat, right? Why do people say in marriages and counselors say in marriage, in, in marriage counseling, or you go to family therapy, everything you're going through that he, you guys got a divorce a long time before you actually put in the paperwork. He cheated on you or you cheated on him long before you did it with the other person. Why? Because it starts with a thought. So do you want to change the way you think? So then the outcome could be the one that God wants you to be, to, to be in. All right, it's really important for us to realize that. Look at what it says in Romans 12, 2. It says, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then we will be able to um, test and approve that God, God's will is good, pleasing, and perfect. So God is already telling us, hey, do not be confirmed with this world. Do not be conformed with what's going on around you in your mind. Because what I have given you is something so much better. I want you to be transformed. Transformed with the renewing of your mind. Why your mind? Because he wants to renew your thoughts. But guess what? Let's take this somewhere. Let's take this to another different avenue. Right, And we're going to talk about how to renew your thoughts. We're going to talk about that. And I have six different steps to help you do that. So if you haven't yet, take something to write with and, and, and we'll do it. Okay, comment hi or comment I'm on you or comment one, whatever you want to comment so that I can know that, that, that this, is, this is getting to somebody's heart. Okay, because I know that this word is going to be powerful to somebody that's listening to me today, even if it's just one person. I promise you that your life will never be the same again. If you go through the steps that I'm talking to you about, if you understand that mastering your thoughts, your internal dialogue is so imperative for you to get to the next level in your life. Okay, really, really important. All right. God has made you unique. He has made you powerful. He has made you beautiful. And let me tell you something. Um, that our thinking is the most powerful thing that we could have in our life. Because the way you think is going to make you make the decisions that you have today. Guess what? Have you ever been told you are where you're at because of the decisions that you have made? Have you ever been told that, that, that if you would have made a different decision, you would have been in a different place? All those things are things for you to understand that God has given you the ability to make choices according to the thoughts that are in your mind. And those decisions that you make will get you to a different place if you just change the way you think. Very important. If you just change the way you think. You know, I am thinking about this, this whole uh, situation with, with the presidency. I don't know if the president has been chosen yet. Um, I think not. I haven't watched the news today. I've been preparing all these days. But it's just so amazing how people will stop their whole life. They'll stop their whole relationship with their families, with, with their children, with, with their job, just to find out who's the president. And don't get me wrong. Yesterday I was on TV. I, I, I wanted to know who was the president. And I wanted to see who, you know, what was going on. And it's just amazing what's going on in the media today and what's happening and how they try to control all of your thoughts. The media has no credibility anymore. And in my opinion, we, we in, in this whole trajectory with, with Donald Trump and I'm not here to talk about politics. You know, I don't, I, I, you know, 
hopefully you prayed before you voted and you voted for whoever God told you to, to vote for. Um, but I have to tell you that um, uh, the, the whole mindset of, of the whole de democratic mindset that we have here has changed. It's changed because of the way the media has portrayed it. Do you realize they're trying to control you? But do you realize that you control your own thoughts? Not the media, not the presidency, not what's going to happen in, in the next few weeks. I don't know if they're going to know who's the president today or tomorrow or next month. You know, of course I want to know. Of course I'm, 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 I'm a little bit like, wow, what's going to happen? And I'm, I'm planning, doing things, buying food, you know, storing things. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. But at the end of the day, you have to have peace with the Lord that your thoughts are going to be controlled by what God is telling you to do and not by why the media is sharing with you on the news. That's why it's not good to always be on the media. That's why it's not good to always be, you know, um, 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 pega la televisión, right? <laughs> what I'm saying is close to the TV, looking at the TV all day, all the negative things. They're talking about murder. They're talking about this. They're talking about that. And then you walk out of your house and you live in a good neighborhood and you think that somebody's going to murder you. Because that's all that you're putting in your brain. That's why the Bible talks about in Romans 12 too, that you need to renew your mind every single day. So I'm going to go through two things and this is going to be fun. I'm going to go through two, two, through two things and I, I, I want you guys to participate. Okay. So I am going to go away a little bit. From the Bible, although everything is kind of tied into the Bible anyway, but I'm going to show you maybe some techniques for you to switch on your negative thoughts. So first you have to learn, number one, is to think about what you're thinking about. Okay? Once you know what you're thinking about and you know what are the things that you're telling yourself that are negative... Right, Because the goal is to master your internal dialogue so that when you're talking to yourself negatively, you can stop that so that you can become the better version of yourself. That's the goal here. You're mastering your internal dialogue so that what you're telling yourself is what God wants you to do. It's the destiny that God wants you to be walking in. It's the, it's the understanding of where you need to be in your life. So if you're not sharing those things and your internal dialogue is negative, then I'm going to give you some techniques so you can change that. This could be a little funny to some people. I actually pr have practiced this in my life. And, you know, besides casting them out into the obedience of God, and we're going to talk about that, and I'm going to share with you some things, and I will put a PDF on my, my, my link tree on at Prevail the Book in IG so that you guys could click on it and, and you can see what I'm sharing, okay? Um, but this is something that I, I want you guys to start thinking about because it's a little bit funny to start realizing, hey, if I start changing my negative internal dialogue, where would I be today? Think about that. If I start from today changing my internal dialogue, where would I be today if I would have done this a year ago? If I would have done this three weeks ago? If I would have done this last week? Okay, sometimes we put ourselves in the grave and, and don't realize that you're, you're, that's happening in your life because of the thoughts that are going on in your mind. Oh, I don't want to go outside because I'm going to get sick. Guess what? You're probably going to get sick. Because you already said that you were going to go outside and get sick. Okay? So think about your, those thoughts that actually come out of the mouth. And the thoughts that don't come out of the mouth still become real things. Because you are manifested. We are powerful beings. God created us to be powerful. God created us to be unique. God created us to be a better version of ourselves every single day. And while we learn and become more and more who God wants us to be then you could change so many people's lives. I promise you. Okay? God bless everybody. Just wanted to take a little, a, a little time to say hi to everybody. The Brian. Um, God bless you, Brian. How are you? Um, Kelsey, how are you? So many nice people. So many beautiful people joining. And what we're talking about is mastering your internal dialogue. Okay. 
So let's talk about if you want, I want you to write on, on, on the comment. Tell me something that maybe you're thinking about that has been negative. Okay. And I am going to show you how to change it. Something that's negative and I'll show you how to change it. Okay. Something that's negative and I'll show you how to change it. I have one for me. Okay. Is doing this whole process of life with Gina, doing my podcast, doing everything that God created me to do. And I have been really uh, fearful, not fearful, but like, oh my God, I don't know what to expect. Right. So sometimes when you don't know what to expect, you're like, you hold yourself back because you, you have to kind of fall on thin air and hope that somewhere somebody catches you. But when you don't know what you're doing sometimes, or you don't know what's going on with you, sometimes it's scary to go out and do what you have to do. Okay. So for me was that insecurity for me was, Oh, um, maybe I'm not good enough. So let's talk about maybe I'm not good enough. That's going to be the line for today. And I'm going to change. I'm going to teach you how to change your internal dialogue. So this is for anybody, whether you believe in God or not, you know, what, 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 whatever path you're going through. Um, this is really amazing. I didn't realize that I have actually done these things and I never really put them on paper. And then I started writing them down and I'm like, oh my God, these things worked for me and they're going to work for you too. I promise. Okay. So to change your negative internal dialogue, you should change the tone and how you're saying it. That's number one. So if I'm saying, and this is a little funny, but if I'm saying, I don't think I'm good enough. But usually when you talk negative to yourself, usually is a negative thing. Usually is, man, I don't think I'm good enough. You're depressed. You're sad. You don't think you could do it. And it's a negative tone. Well, what if you change your tone? Number one, change your tone. What if you say, well, I don't think I'm, I'm good enough. And maybe make fun of it. I don't think I'm good enough. You know, maybe make, maybe make a Mickey Mouse sound or maybe make a Donald Duck sound or maybe, you know, change the negative connotation of, I don't think I'm good enough. And you'll be able to laugh at yourself and you'll be able to say, I'm so silly. Of course I'm good enough. If God told me to do it, he has given me the ability to do it. So stop it. So the first one is change your tonality and how you're talking to yourself when you talk to yourself negatively. Number two. Ask yourself why. You know, ask yourself, what do you mean? What, uh, ask yourself, it's called a, a, a meta model. Meta model number two. I don't think I'm good enough. Why? Why don't you think you're good enough? How don't you think you're good enough? And start asking you questions and then you start realizing, well, maybe, maybe I am good enough. May, may, why do I keep on telling that to myself? And for you, it could be, I'm so scared. I'm so anxious. Ask yourself why. Why am I anxious? You know? What's going on around me? What's going on? Why? Whenever you're in doubt, ask why. I learned that many, many years ago and it works. Ask yourself why. It will calm you down and it will make you realize that, you know what? There's no reason for you to be anxious. There's no reason for you to be scared. There's no reason for you to be insecure. Okay? Now, if there is, then you got to take other measures. <laughs> All right? You got to take other measures. But most of the time, there isn't. Number three, so number one, change your tonality. Number two, ask yourself why. Number, number three, change the tense. So if I'm, telling you, if I'm telling myself, I don't think I'm good enough. Um, how about I say, I didn't think I was good enough. I didn't think I was good enough. Change the tense of it. You change the tense of it so that it could be like the past. And you could see yourself moving on from it. You can see yourself moving on and, and trust me, don't, don't give up on me. I'm going to get all biblical on you. I'm going to, I'm going to glorify the Lord. I'm going to be all Jesus, Jesus on you. But these are just techniques that you can kind of like do them quickly. Like, what is it that you tell yourself? Write it down and then go back and say, I'm silly for saying that. Why am I saying that? Right? Number two, number three, change the tense of it. I used to be scared. I used to be, um, um, you know, I used to be fearful. I used to be anxious or whatever it is, the negative thoughts that you're going through. I used to be, I used to feel like I wasn't good enough. Okay. 
Talk to me, somebody, if you think this is good. If you think this is going to, I'm telling you, I promise you, if you start doing these things and write them down and you start actually writing them down, they're going to make a change in your life. And then you better get back to me and tell me that, that um, it worked. Okay. Number four, put it in third person. That person said, you know, he said they weren't good enough. She said she was anxious. What am I trying to do here? I am trying to take those thoughts away from you and make you realize that, 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 that that's not the way you should be thinking. When you start making kind of like, you know, stop it already and you start really identifying those negative thoughts. I mean, that's the first thing is really identifying that you're thinking negative, identifying that you're thinking negative about your marriage, about your parenting, about your children, may, maybe about this country, maybe about what's going on in your life, maybe what happened in the past, maybe people that you haven't forgiven, maybe, um, you know, th these thoughts, these thoughts. Let's take it a little further. How about the thoughts that you have about other people? How about the thoughts that, you know, you're at work and there's a coworker that's always telling you off and or a coworker that's always bothering you or a coworker that's always down your throat and you're thinking in your head, like, I want to beat this girl up. I, 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 I want to, you know, wait, wait till three o'clock and school is over, <laughs> right? When you used to go to school or if somebody's talking, listening to me today and, and you're going to high school or grammar school, or even college, okay? How about thoughts of, Wow, look at that guy. He's so handsome. And you have a husband. Okay? How about those thoughts of, hey, um, um, I, I, I am, I am, um, you know, I, I should, look at that, that nice dress. I can't afford it. I should steal it. How about those thoughts? It's not only thoughts you, talk, you think about yourself, but it's also thoughts that you think about other people. I want you to think about that. Because infidelity starts with a thought. Stealing starts with a thought. Okay? Every, every law that you disobey from God starts with a thought. And if you don't stop it at the root, guess what? It's going to eventually become your character. That's why you see people in jail. That's why you see people not prospering in their lives. That's why you see people that are not fruitful. That's why you see people in a circle all the time. That's why you see the same couple arguing about the same thing for 30 years. Are you kidding me? You're arguing about the same thing. You don't even want to be around those people anymore. You know, people that are constantly talking about the same thing and it's been 10 years. They're not changing their thoughts. And number five, use the word but, B-U-T, effectively. I am not good enough, but if I read the word more, if I listen to, 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 uh, 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 preachings more, or if I read a book, a positive book, or if I, if, if you know, whatever I do in my life, but I'm insecure, but maybe I need to go to school. Maybe I need to write down um, certain things before I say them. I'm insecure about this, but maybe I need to get better. Tell me somebody that this makes sense. So five things that you can do. Five things that you can do that could change your mind from, from negative internal dialogue to positive internal dialogue, okay? Change the tone, uh, ask yourself why or how, change the tense, okay? So now you're taking it away from yourself, uh, put it in third person, and use the but effectively, all right? I feel this way, but, I feel this way, but. And I remember when I was in, 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 in high school, I, I, I share this, I'm pretty transparent with you guys, right? My whole life, I always had problems with English. And um, I probably still do, but that's okay. God is using me through, through that. Um, and, uh, but I was always very good in math. And I remember to this day that I was very insecure in that topic but I used to say, hey, but if I do very good in music and in math and in science, because I was very good in, in those fields, if I get a 70 in English, it's going to bring up my GPA if I become better in the other subjects. And that's what the but is. The but is using the but effectively as saying, hey, I'm, I'm not good here, but maybe I could do this. Maybe I could do that. Okay. So that, that's amazing. You have the ability to change 
your internal dialogue. You have the ability to break those generational curses in your life if you change the way you think. Because if you change your thoughts, you will change your decisions. And those decisions will, um, um, I, I, gotta, I gotta share that again because that, oh my God, it, I thought it was so amazing. Our thinking and choosing becomes the signal that activates or deactivates the generational issues in your life. So you have the power. We're going to stop being victims and stop saying I'm like this because somebody abused me when I was small. I haven't been able to succeed because I didn't get my degree. I haven't been able to succeed because everybody always hates me or people hate on me or I can't get another job because ABC. I can't get up early enough. You know, stop it already. God already created you for greatness. You have to do the sacrifices in life to get to the levels where you want to be. Oh, I can't go to college because I can't pay for it. Okay, so save money. Get, get scholarships. Oh, but I don't know how to do it. So figure it out. Amen. When you really want to get something done, you figure it out. And today we're going to stop being victims by changing the way we think and becoming who God has created us to be. I got I to gotta tell you, um, my personal trainer at one point, okay, he came from a family that everybody had heart disease, diabetes, um, they were obese, everybody. He showed me pictures of his aunts, uncles, brothers, everybody that, that was around. And he decided when he was in his early teens, I will not, I will not, I will not, I will not, I will not become that person. Okay. I will not become that person that my family is. And real early on in his life, he started training. He started eating right. He started being healthy. Right now, he's close to 60 years old. He still has an amazing body. He's still eating healthy. He's still doing what he has to do. Most of his family has passed away. Very sad. Because they didn't stop what they needed to do. So you have the ability to stop that generational curse by the thoughts that are in your mind. Because they create your act. All right. I apologize for that. All right. Somebody's calling me. I didn't put the no notification on. Okay. But it is very important that, that, that we need to realize that we have that power through the words and the, the, word, the thoughts that go in our mind and the words that come out of our mouth. Okay? So stop. Stop. We're not victims here. Check this out. I'm going to give you something more concrete. Okay? Even more concrete and more biblical. Because I want you to master your internal dialogue. All right, and I have six steps here. So I give you five steps that really didn't have to do anything with the Bible. All right, I mean, they do, but they don't. And, um, right, changing your tonality, meta model, change your tense, putting your, your negativity in third person and use the butt effectively so that you could realize, hey, probably what you're thinking is pretty silly. And if it's not silly, you could still change the way you think and you could become a better person. All right, but listen to this. Let's sit down. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 6 tells us to cast down every argument, also called imaginations, okay, and every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. But sometimes instead of casting them down, we sit there and we stay with our thoughts and we don't make any changes. We don't make any changes to our thought life. We don't take out the time to work in ourselves. You know, self-care, part of self-care is thinking about what you think about. That's part of self-care. Part of self-care is saying, you know what? Although maybe there's a lot of divorce in my family. Maybe there's a lot of poverty in my family. Maybe there's a lot of emotional distress in my family. Maybe there's a lot of suicide in my family. I am going to choose not to think about those things and make different changes in my thought life. So that my actions could become different. Because somebody say amen to that. Number one. We need to take our time for ourselves. Self, um, self care is very important. Identify your negative thoughts. Number one, identify them. What are they? What are your negative thoughts about yourself? Maybe God is calling you to start your business and you think you can't do it. Maybe God is calling you to be different in your family and you think you can't do it because nobody else has done it. 
Okay, maybe God has called you in a different direction in ministry and maybe you don't want to take that plunge because you're a little bit scared. Okay, maybe God is calling you to go back to school. Maybe God is calling you to write a song. Maybe God is calling you to do an album. Maybe God is calling you to, it could be anything, to be a pastor. It could be, maybe God is calling you, you're a teacher and maybe you, you, you need to take the next step of being a principal of a school. Whatever it is for you, you know, maybe God is calling you to get out of that addiction. And maybe you're addicted to alcohol and drugs and pills and, and other things in your life. And God is saying you need to stop and you think you can, but you can. In the name of Jesus, if you change your thoughts, you can become who God has created you to be. I promise you that God will see you through it. He will definitely see you through it. I promise you that. Number one, identify your negative thoughts. Write them down. Take out time and think about what you're thinking about. Categorize your thoughts. Categorize them. Am I always feeling insecure? Am I always feeling anxious? Am I always feeling fearful? Am I always feeling doubt? Am I always feeling confusion? Am I always, you know, uh, 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 thinking about negative thoughts to hurt somebody? I mean, whatever they are, you got to categorize them. Okay, categorize them. Because after you do that in step number two, step number three is that you're going to find Bible verses that deal with those areas. So if you are always fearful, find a Bible verse that says, you know, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a spirit of sound mind, a spirit of peace. Okay, so think about that. Think about those thoughts and categorize them and then find Bible verses. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share something re really deep with you. Sometimes you think, oh, well, I'm not a scholar. I'm not a theologian. I don't know how to find Bible verses. Guess what? Google it. Bible verses on fear. Bible verses on doubt. Bible verses on insecurity. And they will come up. And you start reading them. So that's step number one is identifying. Step number two is categorizing your, your negative thoughts. Step number three is find Bible verses for every one of those negative thoughts that you have in your heart. So listen, I'm telling you to do some work. I'm telling you to do some self-care. I'm telling you to start taking care of yourself because where God wants to take you, you need to master your internal dialogue. You need to learn how to communicate with yourself that those thoughts are not of God. You need to learn how to increase your communication with yourself, with the positivity, with the word of God, so that you can become that version that God has already created for you before the foundations of this earth. He's already created that for you. Okay? Number four, this is even bigger, and I'm working on this too. Okay, number four, memorize the verses, meditate on them, and believe. Memorize. Meditate and believe. Memorize. Meditate and believe. Why do I say that? Because you reading a verse one day, when that thought comes up, if it's not in your mind, you're not going to be able to cast that thought into the obedience of God. There's a reason why God told us, you are going to think things that are not cool. You are going to think things that are negative. You are going to think things that are going to stop you from the destiny that I have for you. So I want you to do self-care. I want you to start thinking about what you're thinking about so that when you do that, you can cast, you can cast those thoughts out into my obedience and you don't, and you won't think them again. And I'm going through this again because you need to get this. Number one, identify the negative thought. Number two, categorize the thought in, into, feel, in, into a feeling. Number three, find a Bible verse that deals with those areas. Number four, memorize, meditate, and believe. Memorize, meditate, and believe. Number five, fight with the word and cast those thoughts down. You got to fight. You got to fight. I know that I have people listening to me today that are fighters. I know that I have people here today that are tired of being tired of being tired, that are in the bottom of the bottom of the bottom, and they need a change in their lives. I know. I know that there are people that are tired of being um, 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 in a situation that they don't want to be in, and they don't know how to get out of it. I know that there's people listening to me today that are just tired of being negative, that are tired of being sick that are tired of going from problem to problem, that are tired of, of just not seeing, you know, the, the, 
the silver lining or not seeing God speak to them or not seeing, not being able to get out of the rut that they're in. I know that there's people that are listening to me today and this is what you need to do to start understanding that God is there. That although God might be silent, he is talking to you. He's talking to you to different things and I could be one of the people that he's using to speak into your life. Fight. Get those, get those verses. Memorize them. Believe what you're saying. Okay, believe what you're saying. Meditate on them. Don't meditate on just blah, 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 blah. No. When you meditate, the Bible says meditate on my word. When, when you meditate, you're meditating on the word of God. Put on the Bible while you're relaxing, listening to the word of God. The word of God is what's going to increase your faith. It's what's going to make you understand, hey, that there really is a God. Oh my God, I've been thinking wrong. It's not about the universe. It's about the God that created the universe. Okay? It's not about um, um, a meditation or doing this and that and the other. I promise you, I know that that um, there might be people here that practice all these things and that's okay. But I'm teaching you a better way. Because I've done the meditation th stuff. And it's scary. Okay? Because you're inviting people in your life that you don't even know who they are. You need to meditate on the word of God. And number six, this is the best one. Because we're going to do this as soon as we hang up today. Okay? And you know what it is? You're going to walk in victory and maintain your victory. Why am I saying that? Okay? Because those thoughts are going to come back. Those thoughts that they told you when you were young. Those, those thoughts that, that, that you started believing because somebody told you them, um, a teacher told you, maybe your mom, and maybe you just tell yourself, maybe somebody in authority told you, maybe it was a cop, maybe it was a counselor, maybe it was somebody that told you something about yourself that you're still believing it today. And I'm telling you that if you cast every thought into captivity, if you just do everything that the Bible says, the Bible says that you are blessed, if you obey my commandments, you are cursed if you disobey them. Okay? And I want to tell you that a lot of us try to do so many things to run away from the destiny that God has for us. So many of us run away from... from. I, I, listen, I remember... Okay? I, re, I, I remember this like it was yesterday. Okay? Uh, if you guys don't know my testimony, you need to pick up the book, uh, 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 Prevail... The, pro the, the process of overcoming wherever books are sold, Amazon, by Janari Arcecaro. My mother was, uh, she foretold it. But I have to tell you, in my testimony, okay, I was a church girl. I was a church girl. Okay, everybody knows that. My, my parents were, 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 were pastors. I grew up in church. I did everything right. Got married. Um, things didn't work out in my first marriage. It didn't even last nine months. I, in my marriage, I wanted to die. I literally wanted to take my life. I wanted to, 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 um, I was pregnant when this happened. I was two months, uh, one month or two months, uh, pregnant of, of my daughter that today is 19 years old. The glory be to God, um, that I didn't go through with it. But so many things happened in my life there. Okay. So many things happened in my life. And I have to tell you that there was a time in my life that was dark. There was a time in my life that I just was not, I love God. I loved him. I would pray to him, but I was not following his commandments. Okay. And I remember going to a club and I remember going with a girl that I thought was my friend and she wasn't my friend. She knew that I had drank a little bit too much. I'm a light drinker, very light drinker. After two, I'm falling asleep. Okay. It's horrible. <laughs> my, my, my husband makes fun of me. Everybody makes fun of me, but that's okay. Um, so, uh, uh, I remember taking her home and her offering me things that I knew were not of God. And I was smart enough, at least I was smart enough to say, I'm not going to do that. But she allowed me to drive home and I was drunk. A real friend doesn't let you do that. Okay. A real friend, if they see something is up with you, they'll be like, take a cab. Take an Uber, do what you got to do. But she let me drive home. Look at what the mercy of God did. I got home. I don't remember getting home. I don't remember. I don't remember getting home. What I remember is waking up, walking up the stairs. It was five o'clock in the morning and my mother knocking on my door because it was eight o'clock and my daughter had woken up and she was like, I know what you're doing and I'm not taking care of your daughter. And you know what? I was up, but I, that's all I remember. I was like, oh my God, how did I get home? 
all of that because I allowed the thought in my mind to say, well, maybe God is not with me. Maybe, um, um, you know, maybe the ministry that God said he had in my life is not true. Maybe I, I, I want to go and party. I want to go try it. I want to go do, you know, go out there. I don't want nobody telling me what to do or what not to do. And it, 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 it ended up to almost take my life. Thank God for the mercy of God that I am here today. I don't remember getting home, guys. Because I started thinking those negative thoughts that maybe God didn't love me. Why did God let this happen to me? Why did God let me get a divorce when that was never something in my mind? Why did God let me, you know, be a single mom or, or raise a child by myself? All those thoughts kept on coming into my mind to the point that it made me do something that almost took my life. And I want to tell you today that God has a destiny for you. And you need to learn how to master your thoughts. Because it's through your thoughts that you're going to be able to reach that destiny. Because remember that thoughts become feelings that become actions. That become habit and then become your character. And you know what God, God wants your character to be? To be a child of God. To be a child of God doing what he has planned for you before the, the foundations of this earth. And I want to tell you, if you need to listen to this episode again, Mastering Your Internal Dialogue, I want you to do it. Because I'm giving you very, very um, 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 simple steps to do it. And I promise you that they will work. Identify your negative thoughts. Categorize them by feeling. Find Bible verses that, that, that focus exactly on that thought. Memorize, meditate, and believe them. Fight like it was it, it, you're fighting for your child. And then walk in victory. We're done with being victims. I wanted to share with you generational curses. I wanted to share with you so that you can see maybe where you're at and maybe where you need to grow from. But it's not your business to stay there. It's your business to get out of it. Okay? And you will get out of it. I want to tell you next week, I'm really excited. Okay? Next week, I'm going to bring my mom over again. I'm bringing my mom next week. And I want to tell you, I already spoke to her. We're excited about, about the, uh, the life that we're going to have together because I want to have her perspective and what she did in order for me and my siblings not to go through the generational curses that she went through. I mean, we went through some, right? I've shared some of them, but there's some that we didn't go through because my mother stood in the gap for those generational curses. So it's going to be a different point of view and, and what it is, is, what, what was her experience when she found out about generational curses? What was her experience, okay, when, when she realized, hey, I don't want my child to go through this. I don't want my child to do this, that, this, and the other. And I'm going to make it my business so that they don't be who I am. And that's who we're going to have next week. Christina's saying, I love her. She's so amazing. She is. She's so amazing. If you guys haven't met her, I want you to be here next week. I want you to master your internal dialogue because you need to be the best person that God wants you to be. And with this, you know, this, and, um, I, I, I promise you, I, 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 I promise you that if you, find, I'm so sorry. Something I have to learn is to, uh, cancel all my, um, notifications. Uh, but I, I want to tell you today. Okay. This is life with Gina becoming a better you mastering your internal dialogue. If you want to see the last episodes, go to my YouTube, Janari Arce Caro. I am going to air my new podcast tomorrow at the Prevail Point. You could get on it on Anchor, Spotify, or Apple. Okay? Go to my Twitter, Janari Arce Cuaro. Okay? Follow me in those different platforms. In, in, in Facebook, I'm Janari Arce Cuaro or author dash Janari Cuaro. In, in IG, I'm at Prevail the Book or Janari Cuaro. So many different platforms that God is allowing me to really share because you need to become better and so do I. We are in this journey together. God bless you guys so much. I mean, so many people joined here um, on Instagram. I apologize that I got cut off a little bit, but I, I want to thank you guys all for joining here on Facebook and on Instagram. And I want to let you know, man, that you need to stop and make a decision.
today. You make a decision today that you will no longer be a victim of generational curses. You will no longer be a victim of your thoughts. You will make the proper decisions according to how, how God has called you to do. You will write down your negative thoughts. You will make sure you never think about them again. And you will make a decision today to self-care. Self-care today. Make a decision today to self-care God bless you. If you guys have any questions, we are going to be live next week with my mom. She's going to be sharing her point of view. And the following week, I finally, I'm going to have my husband come and share with you guys a man's point of view on generational curses. And I promise you it's going to be hilarious because my, my husband's very funny. Um, we are going to practice what we're going to do, but I'm a little bit scared, okay, because <laughs> that's my, that you know, I'm going to share my, my intimacy with you. I'm going to share my husband with you, and that's going to be the following week. And then for the last week of November, we're going to be me, my mother, and my sister talking about Thanksgiving, and I'll, I'll share all those things in my different platforms. Hey, this Friday as well, on Facebook, if you're listening to me on, on, um, on Instagram, on Facebook, Fortified Women, look for it. It's also going to be on my story. Fortified Women on Facebook. It's going to be at 7 o'clock Central Time, but our time is 9 o'clock. I'm actually going to be a special guest there, and I am going to be talking about different issues on generational curses. Uh, Erica De Jesus, she is amazing. She pastors with her husband there in Texas. So follow me there too, Fortify Women in Facebook. God bless you so much. And I will see you guys next week. Join me with my mother. Everybody that joined in Facebook. Oh my God, so many people and IG. Um, sometimes I don't know your name, but <laughs> uh, Turquoise. I, I've seen you uh, 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 a few times. Jaja joined. So many people joined. Um, I am almost done here. Uh, Sarah, my niece is here. Wow, God bless you, mi amor. Uh, so many people. Uh, Tiffany, hi, honey. How are you? Um, hey, DM me if you have any questions. Or message me if you have any questions on Facebook. If there's anything I could do to be of your service. Hi, Tasha. How are you, sweetheart? We appreciate it. God bless you all. And um, I am going to sign off here on IG as I do first. And then I'll sign off on Facebook. But hey, remember, you have any questions, you can DM me. Or are you on Facebook, message me. And we will be uh, on it together. I apologize. Some notifications went on and I think I blanked off, but we are here. Okay. Wow. So many people, my mom, my mom, God bless you guys. Awesome. Strong, calm, Kelsey. Wow. I am, I am my life joined. It's my life. Samantha. Wow. God bless you guys. Uh, sometimes I don't know how to read the, the S it's my Libra. God bless you. I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong. But thank you guys so much for joining. Um, we are going to be live next week. And tomorrow my new podcast comes out at Prevail Point. You can get on it on, on Anchor. Uh, on Anchor. On Spotify. Or on Apple. Alright? It's going to be good. Alright? God bless you guys. Bye.